Hey, welcome back to Everyday Economics, the podcast that helps you learn about the economic world happening around you every day. I'm your host, Chris Krug, CEO of the 501c3 nonprofit, nonpartisan Franklin News Foundation. Everyday Economics, a production of America's Talking Network. You can check out all of our podcasts at americastalking.com. To support Everyday Economics, please make a tax-deductible charitable contribution by clicking the link in the show description. We're recording this episode on Friday, October 18th. Joining me, as always, my partner and friend, Dr. Orfe Divangi, PhD economist. Dr. O, we're getting pretty close to an election. As yes, we're taking sir. this, we're, we are uh, yes, well sir. less than three weeks away from yes, November. Sir. And people are voting already in many places. Right? People are voting in many places already. Um, one of the pieces of the discussion that I think needs to occur, you know, inside of the electorate that, that maybe hasn't quite occurred, would be a conversation around the tax plans um, of each of the two candidates, Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump. Um, The Tax Foundation, I think, did a a, a very good job of summarizing the two plans, the the, sort of the highlights, the long-term economic effects of Vice President Harris's proposal, as estimated by the Tax Foundation, would be a reduction in long-term GDP by 2%, reduction of capital stock by 3%, reduction of wages by 1.2%, and employment of about 786,000 full-time equivalent jobs. On former President Trump's plan, again, this is using the Tax Foundation's general equilibrium model, they see a long-term GDP increase of 0.8%, an increase in the capital stock by 1.7%, wages increased by 0.8%, and an employment equivalent of 597,000 full-time jobs. As you and I talked about this, you know, prior to the episode, your review of both of these plans uh, was uh, two thumbs down. Um, uh, totally, totally. And and by the way, it's not to, to knock the work of the Tax Foundation. I like the Tax Foundation. Um, no, no, you're talking well, specifically is, about about yeah. the candidates. Yeah, yeah, the, candidates on, plans. the work of the Tax Foundation is interesting. I, I'm very familiar with the models. Um, I can also very easily tell you what's wrong with the models, right? It's, I like them. Uh, they're simple enough to give you a general picture of where things could be headed. Uh, you know, I, a, a model is really a set of assumptions, right? And, mm-hmm. uh, and they're somewhat reasonable assumptions. And so I, I like them. Now you could go a step further and say, well, hold on a second. Uh, the tax breaks that we're getting and their impact on GDP is right. really going to depend on whether or not people spend that money or save it. Yes. Right. And it will, so, so let let's let's for the for the benefit of the audience that might not be following this as closely as you, in the Harris plan, the idea would be to raise the corporate in, income tax to twenty eight percent from twenty one percent, which, according to the Tax Foundation, would reduce long run GDP specifically by zero point six percent, capital stock by one point one percent, wages by 0.5% and full-time equivalent jobs by 125,000. So could you, could you, I mean, could you make sense of that? I mean, yeah, just totally. the- it, 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 again, it's, it's, it, you know, uh, corporate taxes, corporations are owned by individuals, right? And so, you know, the, ultimately uh, the, the, pro, the profits accrue to, uh, to those individuals, shareholders, uh, you know, and also, of course, you know, you, you might, some people might complain about CEO compensation. I mean, there's this Elon Musk guy pays himself $50 billion. It's crazy. But anyway, uh, I don't know if, I don't know if the company's even profitable. Uh, but anyway, that's just, I have no idea. I, I, I haven't looked. So maybe it is, maybe it's not. Uh, I just think it's kind of a hefty, I mean, you heard about the Starbucks recent Starbucks CEO compensation pack is all mm-hmm. over the news. Uh, but anyway, the point is that we had a tax rate that high before. Yes. And uh, and the big question is, what, w- what was the impact of lowering 
the corporate income tax, uh, you know, before, right? Uh, what was the benefit of doing that? Was it, did it uh, create a ton of jobs, uh, right? And, and if it did, uh, did we see, you know, did, did, you know, was it, was it, was it, um, w was the benefit worth the cost, right? right? And when I say, was it worth the cost? I mean, the deficit that, uh, increases as a result. Now we know, of course, that deficit spending, uh, can, can be inflationary, right? Can push, uh, right. Can be inflationary, can push interest rates higher. And so, uh, and so I, when you would uh, analyze all of these proposals, whether it's the Trump proposals or the Harris proposals, you got to try to take into account all of the costs. You got to look at the fact that under a Harris, for example, uh, a lot of taxes are going to go up, uh, although they make some crazy claims. Uh, but ultimately, uh, they're all about uh, raising revenue and uh, potentially closing the deficit. Mm -hmm. Under the Trump proposal, uh, right? The what I what you hear about is no taxes on a lot of things, but no proposal or no discussion about how to close the deficit, right? How to shrink the deficit. And reduce our, uh, you know, our, the, the slow down the, the increase in debt in, in, in federal, uh, in, in public debt. And so, and so I think it's important for both candidates to come out and say, and, and to, to make it clear to Americans to lay out the full picture. There are trade offs, right? Yeah. Ultimately, what we try to tell our audience is that economics is about trade offs and that there are costs and benefits. And that you can't just ignore one side of that equation. You got to look at the whole thing uh, to assess the net impact, you know, whether or not the changes are going to be positive or negative on net. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think both candidates and, are failing. And, of, and, yeah. and in what period of time? And in one period, of, exactly, so, right? So, you know, exactly. I mean, very like, important. Like take, taking a look at sort of, you know, the, the, the last four years very specifically, you know, since COVID, yeah. the, stimu the stimulus, the, the, you know, the, um, the stimulus, then the further stimulus, and then some of the spending plans that we, that we put together. I mean, we have, as a country, committed ourselves to a significant amount of debt in, in the last Four, in the last four years, yeah, right? And so, you know, it, we did not get ourselves into this situation in the last four years, but we certainly have worsened our situation in, in, the, in the last four years. Um, so, you know, I mean, what is the right way for, for the average American to make sense of any economic plan at, at this point, as they head to the ballot box over these next couple of weeks? Yeah, I, I mean, look, let me just clarify one thing. Harris is proposing to raise the corporate tax to 28%. Correct. And you, you know, those that the, the, the same tax before the Trump tax cuts was at 35%. So like, is it like, is it, you know, she's not necessarily trying to undo fully, uh, like undo the, the, the Trump tax cut. I think that's interesting already on its mm -hmm. own. Uh, but yeah, I think ultimately uh, you have very different ideologies at the top of the, right? For the top of the respective right? purpose, yeah. yeah. The, the, that's right. And on the one hand, you have a group of people that say, well, you know, billionaires are getting away with too much. And we got to close some loopholes and make them pay, uh, make them pay essentially a larger mm -hmm. share of uh, of uh, our tax needs, right? Our right. revenue needs. And then you have uh, a group that says, actually, no, you know, let's just make the tax code simple. 
uh, and lower taxes for everyone. Mm-hmm. Right? And I tend to like a tax code that is simple and lower taxes for everyone. Well, the, the less government in, in, in involvement, uh, and, frankly, and, based and, on the way that government spends money. And, and what, I, won't take, I won't take a stand, a stand on this. I will just say, because I, I think, you know, as an economist, I have to be very fair uh, and stick to what we know. And, sure. and I will say, I do prefer lower taxes. I do prefer a simpler tax code. Uh, a simpler tax code is going to help with capturing some of the losses that come from, uh, from loopholes, from people exploiting loopholes. And from basically, you know, money that should have been collected that hasn't been collected, essentially, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so, you know, I heard uh, many people, including Larry Summers, uh, former Treasury Secretary, talking about funding the IRS better so that we can collect more tax revenues. Well, a simpler tax code would also yeah. make the, the job of the IRS easier, right? Uh, so, so, you know, so from an economics perspective, that makes sense. However, uh, we have to consider the massive deficits that have been uh, that have increased under both Trump and Biden mm -hmm. and the increase in the debt and how we're going to close that loop, that gap. Right. And so uh, and so I think that's really important for the people who say tax cuts pay for themselves. I say that's rubbish. They don't. OK, let's be honest. Uh, so we need to think about how we're going to close that gap, right? As much as I like lower taxes and I want a simpler tax code, yeah, we have to think of how we're going to close that gap. A simpler tax will a simpler tax code alone close the gap? Probably not. Will more funding to the IRS and more enforcement close the gap? Probably not. So the candidates need to be explicit about how they're going to shrink the deficit. Uh, in the years ahead. Well, that's a point that that we can agree on and we can close there. I mean, we need more details. We're not going to we're not likely to get those details in the next couple of weeks. So, you know, for the benefit of people that are looking at 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 the headlines uh, on this, encourage you to take some time. If this is an issue that is important to you, I believe it should be an issue I mean, that's look, important to you. Fiscal deficits are the reason we, you know, we it's hard to bring down inflation. Yes. Uh, right. W w when you look at your interest rates on credit cards, on housing, right, mortgage rates, uh, yeah. right, the supply of treasuries, yes, uh, if not met by uh, by higher demand for treasuries, will yes. push yields higher. And that's just uh, that's just the way it works, and so it affects everybody. Uh, the affordability crisis in high in housing, it's part of that story too, right? Yeah. It, 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 so so yes. It was something we really need as a country. We need to demand answers from our elected officials. Uh, and yeah, and on this podcast, of course, we try to stay fair and balanced uh, and we just present the facts. And those are the facts. All right. I appreciate your thoughts as always for Dr. Orfe Divangi. This has been Chris Krug. Subscribe to Everyday Economics at America's Talking About.